Hello YouTube newsletter subscribers and survival group members. This is Terrell from terrellow3.com. Today is March 23rd, 2017. This is the Black Star Update Report connected to Volume 12 of Terrell's 2017 newsletter. If you notice, there's a little change. Folks are asking for a five-minute report. That was just uploaded right there. So this is just a new thing. I'm going to try. The regular link will appear right here. Or, um, and obviously the the regular report goes 30 to 40 minutes and uh, some people can't sit through that so the shorter reports hopefully will get a little bit better there was no uh, realize after uploading the thing that it didn't include a uh, look at the solar system and we'll try to work that into the five minute deal next week seismic and volcanic indicators all say earth is moving through the first earth change Uptick period for the 2017 Earth orbit cycle relative to the inbound black star positioned in the center of the Libra constellation relative to the Sun. Let's go there and look. See where we are. In the solar system, here's Earth right here. Here's the Libra constellation. The black star would be, because people are asking, it's between Jupiter and Saturn. See the Libra constellation right here. It's just about in the center of it. It's just below the ecliptic plane. So it's going to be just about right in here relative to the sun. And if we could see the thing, it would actually appear to be backing up right now through Scorpio and moving this way from Earth perspective is where it would appear. And uh, you notice that we're getting ready to pass between the sun and Jupiter. Right here so when you go outside at night look up be looking at uh, around midnight you're going to be looking at the earth straight up into the Virgo constellation you'll be seeing Jupiter and the black star would be to the left so it's in between Saturn and Libra it's going to be in just about this position and people are wondering relative to Jupiter orbit path at five astronomical units away it's much closer than that much closer than that closer to Mars orbit path and uh, moving more slowly because it has a magnetic repulsion relationship with the uh, with the Sun so as it gets closer to the Sun it moves more slowly it's backwards of, of what you would think and if it's I'm confident that it's difficult to visualize if you have any experience in astronomy because this it really doesn't make sense but the there are precedents for it and mismatch magnetic polarity means that as it's coming in, the black star is coming in on that elliptical orbit across these uh, ecliptic constellations that it is slowing down as it gets closer to the sun. Then my view is that it has a special relationship with the sun and then becomes locked in somehow. Don't I, I don't ex understand. It's my observation. And we can't see the thing and we're making observations about it through the earth changes. But it appeared to have made a, according to the, ba the binary star magnetic repulsion modeling, it appeared to make a loop-de-loop uh, -loop in its orbit because of the magnetic it came in so close and then was repelled and is it's becoming locked in at about Venus orbit path where it's going to come on around and then be repelled by the Sun So this thing's aphelion position that's out here in Gemini is not nearly as far away as people would think it's not based upon increasing orbital velocity and then being slingshotted around like traditional uh, comets asteroids planets everything all the above this thing is unique and it likely does not go nearly as far away as what we think because of this magnetic repulsion uh, relationship. Okay, let's get back over here. Looking at the seismic data, we had this jolt coming in with the six magnitude earthquakes. We got pounded in Earth 5 in week 5 for 2014 and 15. That's what earned this red value for 2016. But now we have the same thing. This is becoming the new norm now. If you notice 30 right here five magnitude earthquakes then uh, that's that's just about average and then this 260 that's going to be above average for the last uh, um, including this year the last four years the coast coast interview that that was done on March the 5th is now a permanent link that's right here so when you share this in this uh, newsletter with others and have them click on this that's that's from what the critics say one of the finer uh, interviews George Norrie did a good job of staying in the middle, staying neutral, and getting as much information as he could out of me in the, uh, was it one hour and 12 minutes that, that of actual commentary. 
and uh, that link has all those commercial interruptions uh, removed also so the uh, this 260 that's going to be the uh, high water mark for the year this 30 value is the high water mark for the year that this uh, 260 is the highest going all the way back to here week 41 at the backside alignment 303 there's not a higher value right there since this jumped so quickly we hovered right there at just about the average values of 210 the last two weeks and then jump don't be surprised if this doesn't go down before it goes back up again such a big jump probably going to see a uh, drop here we looked at the reporting period for week six is almost over it's over on on uh, saturday it's over on sunday so we're getting near, near the end i didn't see a cropping of six magnitude earthquakes or anything like that the it appears to me that this is because of the magma plume formation and the way that the energy it's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger with each cycle which means that it gets pounded several times and enlarges before we actually start feeling the uh, effects especially the larger magnitude earthquakes don't be surprised if it's a little bit before we get down even to week number 10 before we start seeing this type of activity over on this side I mean, it can happen anytime it can happen while I'm speaking but I'm just saying don't be surprised when you go back and look at the charts we usually have this uh, low in the large magnitude earthquake activity until earth core really gets heated up and we'll see how that uh, growing magma plume uh, affects that moving forward so there's a new dynamic so I expect that there's going to be changes um, that are in the chart then uh, this 4.4 .4 event that was south of Japan that's along uh, magma plume corridor number one then uh, this is going to be the highlight it's only a 4.4 .4, but it was so deep that um, it's down in mantle earth mantle transition zone and it's adding energy to that magma plume number one so reverberating waves going back and forth let's look at the uh, the earthquake chart and this is, uh, this is what I'm talking about this area right here here's that deep earthquake right here in the transition zone we had seven of them this week this cluster over in this area that is east of Australia and this is where magma plume arm number two dives down comes across and then comes back up this way so you see the, from the magma plume activity you start to see these this type of activity out in this area right here expect that to intensify more and more as we go farther along into the earth change uptick period so we're seeing this deep activity it originates here obviously and it moves north the magma plume arm number one is the shortest so we uh, with this deeper activity along this line right here then that's where you're going to expect to see the uh, rising magma plumes the horn formations push up that pushes them the thicker see this stuff is decompressed magma this glassy type down in earth mantle transition zone it's been expanded through the gigantic explosion of the uh, the earthquakes it wants to rise it's contained through the buoyancy barriers and then that causes the wave action within the buoyancy barrier corridors so the uh, when we'll see a pattern in the um, in this region right here in proximity with new volcanic eruptions I'm going to show you that here in a second and that's what you see right here at the top here in Russia so the, whenever we see this activity in Russia we see the deep activity further south towards Indonesia that tells you you're going to get energy pushing towards Cascadia the terminal end of magma plume arm number one so expect uh, there's going to be increased activity over the next few weeks in the Aleutians this activity is going to migrate and it's going to migrate in this direction moving in this direction over here still kind of silent in at Cascadia expect that to change and the deep earthquake we had must have it was 45 kilometers now just just it was a week it was just on it was just on here but because of the time then it's been uh, now been removed because it's been more than seven days so it was just about a week ago when we had this event and that was 45 kilometers this is the second deepest that I've seen in this area the the other one was a little over a year ago at 55 kilometers but you're getting down deeper which is kind of rare for the California quake swarm area to go below 20 kilometers seeing one at 45 
It's a small magnitude earthquake, but this could be an indicator that uh, higher pressures are coming into the area that's going to cause the earthquake activity at the California quake swarm area to become deeper. These are signs that we're looking for. So that's a that's going to be a highlight event. Then before we leave Earthquake 3D, then um, I want to show you how this activity along magma plume arm number three has backed up and see it's moving it's it's regressing it's going back this way we did have a new volcanic eruption here in italy very near the terminal end where it's backed up so you get compression of the terminal end it's moving it's regressing back this way through the low period the activity intensifies we start getting these deeper activities these deeper um, earthquakes and then magma plume arm this is uh three that cuts across this way one goes over this way two goes down here and then four it's a long wavy one it comes around this way it's trying to come across south america over here and we do not see indications of that over the last week this is the last one that powers up because it's the longest reaching all the way around the planet trying to collide over here with uh, magma plume arm number two actually so this is this is just a little bit rare i'm expecting uh this activity to shift further through gibraltar we'll see 4.1 4.2 4.6 this area in the coming weeks and then we'll see the mid-atlantic ridge activate and on the way to doing that we'll probably see a new volcanic eruption here in france along the way and eventually i'm expecting to see activity um news reports coming out that'll likely be the end of april about this super cal uh, this super volcano that's here under germany I'm gonna see some rumbling coming from there because we already see it in italy and we already see it in france and you can see what's on the other side right over here so after we get the new volcanic eruptions we just had one in in uh, italy and expect to see one in france and then we're going to see i'm expecting news reports I mean, no eruption but grumbling right up right up in this area here moving through this uh, earth change uptick period before the uh, peak that we reach in May. Okay, so the uh, focus here is on magma plume arm number one. This is magma plume arm number three that's uh, coming across Nepal and southern Europe. And uh, there was an interesting story about the big wave that hit over in Iran. And uh, since they do not have the pressure relief mechanisms there, the uh, for the volcano to erupt, it appears that it lifted. The magma plume arm lifted and it caused the giant wave. That's if there's nowhere for the pressure to go, lift the whole plate. Lift the whole plate, the water on top gets pushed. And the same way that the magma rushes to find pressure relief, the water runs for relief too. So it runs downhill and it ran right up onto the land because of what happened off the coast. That's the myth, it's mystery. They did, they're saying that it's not a tsunami. Was it caused by earthquake? The trigger mechanisms of what's creating these earthquakes is happening from deep in earth transition zone. That's the reason that they're mystified by it. What's going on? Because of the way those horn formations pop up and it pushes that heavy magma. People think that that's like watery magma underneath Earth's crust. It supports Earth's crust. It's pretty thick. You get hotter and hotter and get deeper and deeper then it's more compressed and more compressed and you have these big um, earthquake events then it causes that magma to want to rise until it's contained by the barriers but then these horn formations continue to push the upper layers and the, that magma is looking for somewhere to go so it's very thick like molasses pushing on it way thicker even than molasses but the, you know the consistency being uh, thicker and thicker as it gets higher and higher that's why it has difficulty getting out of the way and it creates pressure and that pressure wants to go somewhere so on the um, magnetic north pole migration front 12 degree differential same thing that we've been having and uh, notice that the path for 2017 is following 2015 exactly so we're right to this point and i'm expecting this dog leg move that comes out and then we're going to find out how this is going to play for this cycle 2013 14 15 and 16 were all migrating in this direction the paths kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger not so this year so there's a change there's a change that's happened here we got the dog leg from 2015 
exactly in the same place just 12 days later and now it's making the descending move coming down we expect to see a jolt a uh, not a jolt but a dog leg move right over here and then we're going to see how close it follows 2015 and we should be um, trailing last year's position which is the green right here so if you go up there and you find May the 20th it's going to be about this move place right here then on May the 20th we should be 12 degrees behind so we'll see how this plays out as we're moving forward it appears this 12 day differential 12 degree di differential same thing is uh, locked in at 12 degrees and that says there's 377 days in this complete cycle you had you have 365 you add the 12 days you get 377 same number of days in the in the seismic chart for the black star event timeline going back so you go to terlo3.com you look at the map you'll see 12 degree angles just like this because there is a connection between what's going on here and if this model this is the inferior model 25 percent chance and you get a full description of that right here binary star magnetic repulsion model that's the primary and then the magnetic north pole migration model this is the inferior model well you notice you're getting more commentary about this one because this was a year ago five degrees five uh, percent chance of being right then we started running through areas in the chart where the last three years are following by 12 12 degrees every year in places and that's adding more percentage points to now to where this is now and some people think this is 10 degree model no this is 25 degree uh, chance I keep saying degrees my, my apologies it's a it's a percentage uh, the chances of accuracy so these are competing models and the primary model up here has the best chance it's the one that says that the black star is slowing down even more that, that the 180 day cycle is no longer in play so according to this model we're expecting a near side alignment quake event in the at the beginning of May it means we have another cycle that doesn't happen we do not get the magneto pause reversal we do not see the symptoms the signs we do not see the elite with their failsafe plan being initiated we don't see the price of silver being manipulated higher there's a lot of indicators that we're watching in combination with this modeling the elite are going to tell us the year that it's coming so we've passed the 60 day we're already within 60 days of the May 20th 2017 date so they did not launch it they haven't released the contagion they haven't manipulated the economy they haven't done uh, work manipulate the power grids and things on a 60 day uh, ahead of schedule fail safe plan so now we're going to watch the uh, the time around April the 20th April the 20th on the 30 days before then if it was me and I would give my people my elite people 30 days to get to where they're going and we would initiate the plan and let them get through the roadblocks let them get through the uh, quarantine areas um, so we'll see if this H this uh, avian flu deal does intensify if it becomes airborne if it becomes uh, uh, transmissible be between humans and that would be an indicator to me that they uh, the mutagen for this herald strain has been released so those are the kind of things that I expect to see if this 2017 is the year for it to happen these these things do not happen those it's going to tell me more and more that this primary modeling is correct and then we'll have another orbit cycle under our belts okay the uh, let's see if that's pretty much the earth change part of the report that's over with right there and uh, you notice that there's the five minute thingy that's up here at the top this is brand new and I'm gonna start doing that whenever all the data is put together the the newsletter is not finalized yet obviously it doesn't have this link and um, but a lot of people want the short report they can't sit through a longer report it's too boring or it's whatever so hopefully those will be be, uh, be get better and better it's the first five minute report I've ever made in my life so I'm gonna but I want to try with more and more people making those kind of requests then the uh, don't want to say too much about the Ozark survival group program they're in the land acquisition stage which we've been in for the last since September and it was, would have been really nice for the project and for me to be able to um, inform people that we had a staging area property last year it could have been 
could have stepped up the uh, my campaign of waking people up. It's much easier when you have a staging area property, and uh, that's been e elusive. We haven't been able to pull the trigger, having up to 23 investors at one time. <laughs> we were just not able to get her done. But looks like that that might change here shortly. It was shortly after the uh, Steve Olson and the uh, uh, interviews and the leak project interviews that um, this got serious with this uh, current group that's that's coming together right now and the numbers are if you include people that have decided they want to do something else and it's about 200 people and representing hundreds of families these are just the group leaders for each family it's lots of people in this program it has a really good chance of success but what I can share with you I hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes this is just a little short paragraph hope I didn't say anything no specifics in here whatsoever but um, we have an opportunity to secure our hundreds of acres uh, near our, uh, our optimum location and looks like that the, that offer is going to be submitted the attorneys have it right now and there's some negotiating a little bit of negotiating still to do but this uh, could be closed uh, a closed deal here within a week could easily do that so if you're a group if you're a group investor that has been straddling the fence you're probably getting sore by now and you want to become, uh, you want to be one of the landowners, you want to have some say, then you, now's the time. Now's the time to make your leap. Get a hold of David. You have that contact information. He's the uh, group operations uh, director. And, um, and you can become part of that. Otherwise, you're going to wind up working on a large, very large, hundreds of acres staging area property where others are the landowners. And you're going to play by their rules. That's the way that it works. This is I'm not buying this property. David's not buying this property. We have investor group that's buying this property. And they're going to have some rules, and regulations, and it's going to be their opportunity to work with uh, their property in the way that they see fit. So I'm, go I'm going to be working and trying to promote, to help, to bring more people into the program to the best of my ability and to make the entire project a success working under those guidelines. So it's... Uh, those are uh, that's a little update on that information and just a little tidbit then uh, without saying too much then there was a a uh, cave entrance discovered on our property recently that the that the uh, landowners didn't even know about and um, that's that's all I can tell you there has to be some excavation I'm excited about it having lived in that area and seen this same situation to where we dug and dug and dug and dug and we had to remove the sand the debris that had washed in and then we found all kinds of stuff all kinds of things on the other side so I'm uh, I'm pretty excited about that I'm looking forward to uh, getting up there and getting my hands dirty and helping with the general contracting phase of uh, making the improvements on the property that's going to be a lot a lot of fun then hopefully we have another cycle to be able to do it like we want to do it but at least uh, we can get the ball rolling on the trailer park uh, facility and um, get the uh, the groundwork done to uh, make it so that as many members as want to can go there and we can set up our RVs and and uh, be in the right place at the right time in case this cycle is whenever the crap hits the fan. Project supporters include Bernice. I have to stop right there for a second. You have an asterisk. An asterisk by your name because the email address connected to your PayPal account is inactive so I get a notification and a payment send the notification email out to the address the email address that you gave me and it bounced back bounced off your server it doesn't exist so please write me at the uh, if you look at your transa transaction um, ticket your receipt from PayPal it has the email address that you can contact me it has a phone number there where you can call me and or if you for some reason do not have access to that information because uh, for one reason or another because PayPal sent the notification to the same email address that's not working so if you don't have any of that go to terlow3.com hit the contact uh, button there and I'll get to you just as soon as I can and get you your notification email it makes me feel bad take your money can't send you the notification email to get you connected to the research but you must contact me I tried looking on the internet see if you're part of a business try to get did some investigation could not locate 
your contact information. So for Renee's, please, please get a hold of me. Then Armand and Ken, Stan, Kim, Wayne, Anna, Maria, Stephen, Joseph, and Anthony. They went to terralo3.com. They hit the subscription button for either the newsletter only program, newsletter and survival group program. And uh, now they are, they have the benefits. If you want to just be a newsletter subscriber, you're happy with your survival group program, it's only $25 a year. It's the same way that it's been. If you want survival group benefits, that's $45 per year. It, it, it's well worth it. You're going to be connected to over 160 members. You're going to have contact information. You're going to have access to group leaders. You're going to know who the medical operations uh, director is. And if you're in the medical field, you'll be able to connect very easily with the information that you're going to be provided. So you first write for your threat assessment information and with a general description. I live in the United States and then or I live on the East Coast, West Coast. And then you'll receive that information and then you're going to write giving me permission to share your contact information with all these other people. I'm going to introduce you to the group and then you're going to take it from there, devising your best survival strategy possible. You can have multiple options to be able to work with David on our primary property where you can work with Don and Barbara near closer to town their project that they're trying to do and or if you're a real hardcore survivalist you have military experience and uh, you know the Rambo types I, I think that's what they're looking for then Matt and Andrea have an assortment of those types of individuals working together 240 acres in Missouri that's option number three that you're going to so you have multiple options and even if you're uh, just a, a regular old survivalist and you want it to know more about neutralizing black star related threats you want to uh, connect with like-minded survivalists you want to make this an option option one two three or four and if you're a real hardcore survivalist like me you have more than one option you want to plan a plan B plan C you have contingencies for all sorts of things. This can be a great addition to your program. It's a great insurance policy to have for only $45 per year. And then you get a newsletter subscription and you get the special uh, email address to be able to write me as your threat assessment analyst, send me questions, send back the answers. And then, uh, for example, Hugh did the same, did that right here. Big question, leaving for a safe zone bug out location. And uh, he had questions on how to do that so you're a group leader of your local family your local group this is the information that you some of the information that you're going to need and um, so you can benefit just by having access to the newsletters lots of good information in here then um, on top of those who subscribe this week then we have Chris Kimberly, John, Scott, Sharon, and Sandra, they renewed their subscriptions from previous years, and Dottie and Joseph upgraded their newsletter subscription only, their $25 program, to the survival group program. So be sure to send for your threat assessment information to get the ball rolling on that. That's the way it works. Some people write, they want to be part of the survival group program, but they're not ready to do that today. And they'll say in your notification, it, uh, and you get your newsletter survival group notification email to write for that information when you are ready to do that and then please write me from the email address that you want to share with others okay this is a lot of work whenever you're writing from three different emails you only want one shared you write me from one and say that you want it to be a different one and things happen very very quickly around here and it's possible from I made two mistakes this week on this because people wrote me from one email address and wanted me to share a different email address and it skipped by me my apologies for that that was Dale and Roger I think my apologies for that usually those things are right on all the time and that's possible for me to get confused when you're using a lot of different emails and things like that it makes my job way more difficult to keep everything straight what's going on and then uh, there's a note here for Bernice to write me two donations this week Roger and Paul and one of those was actually an upgrade Roger I think it was Roger upgraded when he was already in the survival. so there's a $20 deal there I said Roger you're already in the survivor group program so apparently you wanted to donate <laughs> you wanted to donate $20 so here you are over here to uh, making a $20 donation to the research appreciate that very very much you guys join uh, Denise who uh, 
sent in the first donation in like two months last week. Appreciate you guys' support very, very much. And uh, those who want to subscribe, get more information. This link right here, the reason that that's put there is so this information can be shared on Planet X News and uh, Bended Reality. Uh, dot com it allows them to just use this feature that this uh, black star up their report and give a free link to those that want it and from the counter this is on a counter you can count how many people and it's about a hundred a week people from YouTube and from these other outlets that uh, download complimentary newsletters and I hope eventually you guys are going to be subscribers supporters of the research then you can be enlighten me and make contributions to the newsletter like you right here it's amazing how you can ask some questions and it gives me the opportunity to make clarifying statements that then can show up here and help other people that are thinking kind of the same thing. Then uh, that's pretty much what I want to show you with you guys. You have all the new supporters. You have little, just one little brief paragraph here on uh, survival group information. Hopefully, once we get our staging area property and I can be more vocal about this then um, there's going to be much more information shared and my efforts are going to be stepped up tremendously once we have a stage staging area property that's going to be a real uh, magnet for bringing more people in the one of the first things I'm going to do is schedule an interview with WSO and some of you guys are saying why would you want to do that um, Stephen Wayne um, God bless them the, 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 they they're limited in some ways but they're very good at drawing a crowd way better than me way better and they can draw a crowd many of you guys came and woke up because of the work the foundation that they laid down then you found science-based information and now you're you're you're, you're doing pretty good so let's not knock uh, or let's do it this way let's give credit where it's due and sharing with uh, Wayne and uh, and Steve Olson has helped the Black Star investigation they gave me an opportunity to go and share some of the science some of the information and from what I hear their survival group program collapsed so there's going to be you know they've got like 70,000 people or something that they heard together to uh, to make these announcements and things give me an opportunity and we'll get them some of those and you know, woke up and into the survival group program to make the group that much stronger that's the uh, that's the objective so uh, Here's some commentary here, and you're going to see things about the manipulation of silver prices, and that's part of the environment that we're going to be watching. That's going to happen. It's going to get up around 47.50, and J.P. Morgan's going to announce they're not covering the silver short position. It's going to cause panic around the world. And part of creating the panic is part. That's part of the fail-safe plan, the controlled demolition, the uh, House of Rothschild, the Rockefellers, the J.P. Morgans. They could collapse the global economy whenever they want to. It's, run on paper out of the back door of central banks like the Federal Reserve and they are manipulating using the back door of the Federal Reserve to manipulate the paper price of silver down they are accumulating as much of this stuff as they can you should be doing the same thing if you have the resources to keep stacking why the price is below twenty dollars and at a, you're going to want to have those resources obviously when the crap hits the fan small denomination silver and uh, one silver eagle is going to buy a lot when the advertisement, whenever the news goes out that it's two hundred, three hundred, four hundred dollars an ounce, and you bought five of them for less than a hundred dollars, this is a golden opportunity. But you're watching silver prices as one of your key. Um, what do you call? What do you call it? This is going to be part of the pattern moving forward when the elite execute their plan. Commodity prices are going to explode, and uh, right now they're stacking. Because they're taking this stuff with them to the underground arc cities then uh, lots of news uh, reports uh, obviously this is over a hundred page newsletter and the big one will be deadlier than thought and what they're saying in the story does not even begin to touch they're saying that this area is going to be much more this area is going to be a giant hole that includes a whole state of Nevada when you get this these magma plume um, it's magma plume activity pushing underneath this area, and then you get you get the collision of magma plume arm number one and two. These these buoyancy barriers break. This this hot magma coming from deep inside Earth transition zone displaces this magma in this area, and it creates a giant inland sea. The only thing that puts this fire out is the Pacific Ocean. 
or this would be a global uh, extinction level event for something like this to happen. But there is news and the, the mega quake, there's more and more predictions that the big one's going to come out west and it is coming for sure. You're going to see signs coming from the south first with this magma plume activity. You're going to see, go back over here just for a second, you're going to see lots of fives coming in this area right here with this magma plume expansion the rising of these horns formations to like you see this one right here you're going to see lots of them in this area and then you're going to see activity this magma plume is likely pushed under cascadia the lifting is just not causing the the horn pushing up it's just this is so locked in here that we're not seeing it yet but that activity is coming it's coming in the future for sure so you guys in this if you came if you looked at this map from four years ago, there would just be a little quake swarm area down here in South, in South California, Baja California. Quake swarm area is what we called it. And since uh, Solomon Island, 2013, February 6, we have this new line of activity from Texas that points up towards Cascadia right here with a just dramatic proliferation of this area. So uh, Mary Greeley getting more uh, flamboyant in her her uh, Yellowstone activity, more magma intrusion, things like that, that's what we should expect. Remember the giant uh, reservoir, they're calling it carbon, molten carbon that's down here? That appears to me to be leaking from the giant magma plume activity. It's just above Earth transition zone. It's being contained within its own buoyancy barriers, but this activity is growing, growing, growing underneath this part, portion of the western part of the United States, even under the central part of the United States. And whenever we have these breaking of the buoyancy barriers out here, this is going to add to the destruction of the United States. It's going to begin out here in the west, it's going to shift east. And the, we're going to be good on the stable North American Craton, but that activity is going to shift over here to the Appalachians. And New Madrid is going to pop. And we're going to have rocking and rolling on either side of the stable North American Craton. That's why your safe zone in the United States is going to be on the North American Craton, far enough south so that you can avoid the uh, pyroclastic flows coming from these bulging calderas that are going to erupt. Yellowstone, expect northwesterly prevailing winds. And you can see that puts Canada right in the crosshairs. And if you want to join a survival group in Canada, then you're, if you're in this area, you're looking at traveling all the way across over into Alberta. Between the mountain range and Edmonton. That's where Dave's survival group is, over there. And um, best option, in my mind, if there's any way, join your Ozark survival group right here. It's uh, between now and May expected to uh, grow, especially when I get the news about the staging area property, and especially after the excavation that I'm expecting to do over there. So um, we'll see how that shakes out. Then uh, NASA's again predicting zero electricity, and uh, this is a survival article that is up in the featured section because uh, this is the kind of thing you need to wrap your head around in your preparations. And then uh, more of this activity, these uh, big holes appearing up in um, northern regions of Russia, Siberia, methane being attached, and this is going to be the permafrost melting and things like that. And uh, there's going to be a lot of disinformation, disinformation that comes out of these stories, you know, aliens coming out and you know, all this other stuff. But this is a sign of the changes that's happening. Ancient helium, and uh, Mary Greeley will tell you about it, it is becoming more uh, prevalent uh, around the world. And it's because of the um, deep magma plume activity and the increase in the, the volcanism and the seismicity and melting of the permafrost, things like that definitely changing earth and uh, for those that think an ice age is coming just not going to happen you probably live in the northern regions where you're getting hit by a polar vortex phenomenon the polar vortex phenomenon every now and then but uh, 2017 will be the hottest year in recorded history it's uh, earth's heating from the inside the oceans are getting hotter and hotter and hotter it's affecting the land mass more and more and more and Dale woke up about the charting of the fireball reports and it's actually more dramatic than what this shows. So the, here's the log information in my reply. We only had 400, what was that, under 500 in uh, 2005. Under 500 in 2005. 2016, we're over 5,000 because we have an interloper in the inner solar system. That's what it is. 
So I was looking down at the chart data that uh, New sent in on the meteors. See if I can jump down. Hey, there's a, uh, this doesn't happen very often. Robert wrote in, Scriptures in the Black Star. This is a good article right here. It's on page 32. For those that, uh, this doesn't happen very often. That there's a question on the scriptural part. Give me a chance to put a chart in from my book, The Mystery Explained. Remember that the updated, the upgraded version is in the 2017 Dropbox folder for the cleaned up version for uh, all uh, valued newsletter subscriber and and sub, uh, survival group members. The uh, rough copy is still posted at terralow3.com for those that want it for free. Then uh, looking at these, oh, I was on my way to getting something, to looking at the value. The thing that was incredible to me about looking at it the total number, am I going to be able to find it here? It should be right, oh, close, close, getting there, getting there, getting there, right here. In 2000, in this year, 2016, we broke the 2005 total number of reports for the whole year in week five. That's the difference between now and back in 2005. And now, in 2010, we broke the record in only 11 weeks. That's what's going on. This is the fireball reports. People citing fireballs around the world. They are dramatically increasing. The reason? Because we have, it's a pinball effect. We have an interloper in the inner solar system. And it shakes things up. And then it shakes other things up that shake other things up. And the end result is much more meteors. Much more fireball reports. And more reports of meteors hitting uh, buses. I mean, most of them are going to land in the Pacific Ocean. The highest percentage is going to land in the Pacific in the ocean. You know, so much water. So where people aren't, when you're seeing them hitting things uh, regularly, being in this kind of reports, it means there's a lot of them. There's a lot more, obviously, than are, than are being reported. Then uh, just about reached the maximum here on my time allotment. Um, allotment physics and astronomy section scientists say rogue planet contradicts existing models of planetary formation well you're kind of going to expect that imagine what happens when a sun goes supernova and it has planets where's it going to go it's going to fall on a gravity well somewhere it's going to be influenced from a distant object and it's going to begin a new relationship and that relationship may be with a star maybe with a black hole so to me this story NASA is still in its infancy in knowing what's really out there. They're nowhere near ready to start traveling to space, Mars, or anywhere because they have so many things to overcome. 20 things to overcome before they can begin fighting the subatomic particle flows just traveling through space to keep humans and their equipment safe because they have not figured out, like the UFOs, to create a magnetosphere around their ship to deflect a deflector array. To be able to do that, they're still using penis shaped projectiles using oxygen and hydrogen um, fuel you know using solid fuel so um we're still in our infancy and uh, so you can't expect a lot out of NASA I mean uh, the human beings are are still in their infancy and in understanding what's going on out there if you go outside the most common if you look into the stars the most common star that's out there is the red dwarf star three-quarters of them are red dwarf stars and you can't see any of them they're beyond the visible spectrum like most stars, they are beyond the visible spectrum. You see the main sequence stars, you see a very, very small percentage of the stars that are actually out there. And uh, the first brown dwarf star was discovered in 1995. To give you an idea where human beings are in discovering these uh, anomalous stars that are out there. Because there's a spectrum of them we know about just a small sliver of them. And then I wanted to post this story in here. It's a combination of two because this uh, didn't show up in one. But uh, um, it looks like they're going to get back into the Vince Foster case. And, of course, the FBI is going to take control of it. And uh, and Hillary's going to be found. I mean, no emails, nothing. No evidence whatsoever to indict that woman. The FBI, what a bunch of darn cronies. Uh, establishment cronies. That's, uh, that's what... That's what our government, uh, they serve the Council on Foreign Relations. It's what the chairman of the Council on Foreign Relations says. Nothing to do with what happens in Washington, D.C. Or this gal right here will be behind bars. For sure. For sure. Right now. This guy was shot behind the back of the head <laughs> twice. 
they realize, hey, he couldn't have done that to himself twice. Now could he? Um, go figure. So uh, good riddance to uh, David Rockefeller. Just going to kind of throw it. It's, it's a, just a little bitty, bitty piece of the elite going down. He has a gigantic legacy that is uh, part of the Underground Arc City program. Okay, I went a, bit, a little bit long on this report. And uh, get more information at terralo3.com. And that's where you can support the research. And uh, here's a uh, some of the good visuals. These are Zoom presentations where you actually get to see um, what I'm pointing out in these interviews right here. Hope to do a few more of these soon. Appreciate that over here with uh, uh, Eric and with Steve Olson. So thank you guys, and I'll see you on the next Black Star Update report. And I will try to do some midweek reports, if at all possible. This has been extremely, extremely busy uh, around here, and I'm going to try to make more reports. I know more people want more reports. Thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next Black Star Update report.